Okay guys, the time has come. We're going to go ahead and, and start putting the oil in the machine. So I want to go, I want to talk about this oil a little bit. Before we do that, we have plenty of viewers that is following along on the series and they want to know just like me. And what was really, what was really interesting about this, you know, this little journey that we've started down is that when it came time to purchase some oil for this machine, I wasn't exactly sure what I was supposed to have. And I, I got the chart off of the uh, online. A guy had, you know, we had a couple guys email me pictures out of this book right here that had the chart talking about the oil. And the chart is actually on the back of the machine as well. There's a tag on there that says the same thing. So we're going to go into our new operating instructions list right here, this new book that I got. And I got it, I got it marked where we're going to go to. And we are going to talk about oil specifications for this g and &E shaper this is from the manufacturer so when i started looking up oil i wasn't sure what ssu was or sus which is uh, sable seconds universal viscosity right here if you look up in this top paragraph it says that they recommend using a mineral oil of 450 to 600 seconds sable universal viscosity at 100 degrees all right i wasn't sure what that meant you know i've never i've never studied this right here so i started doing a little researching and, and uh, asking around and then I, I talked to paul at work and you know he's a guru when it comes to uh, fluid power systems and oil and that kind of stuff so he helped me out and he explained what this was he printed out a paper for me i'm going to show you that in a minute and we're going to talk about this for the people watching that doesn't know what this means either okay because i just kind of figured all this out so this this list the uh, recommended oils that you can put in the machine you know manufacturers the trade name and then this is the viscosity of the oil all right this is old stuff so none of this probably exists anymore if it does it's a different name it's not listed this trade name anymore okay so what we're looking for is 450 to 600 Sable universal seconds. All right, we're going to close this up and I'm going to show you a printout that Paul gave me when I was asking him about this. Okay, so there it is. Sable viscosities, SUS. Sable universal seconds. Now, what does that mean? I had no idea what that means. All, all I know is that, okay, we need to find an oil that's in this range right here. I, I've got it highlighted 400 to 600. And you come across, and I'm looking for an ISO oil in the 100 to 150 viscosity range right there. I know that's what I'm looking for now. But I was trying to figure out what, what exactly does this mean, this SUS, okay? So this, this gives the different you know the grading systems for you know ISO AGMA that's uh, American Gear Manufacturer Association uh, SAE you know that's normally automotive related right there automotive engineers okay your different weights of oil so we know that we're looking for 100 to 150 in our weight of oil so the the SUS is is done by you know it's tested in uh, this one says 100 degrees Fahrenheit. It's actually done at 40 degrees Celsius, 40 degrees Celsius, which equates to 104 degrees F, but they've, they've just got 100 degrees on there, but it's tested at 104 degrees or 40 degrees Celsius. So what is SUS and how, how do they determine the oil viscosity? So this is what the oil gods do right here. You take any oil and you put it in a container right here and you heat it up to the temperature we talked about, which is we're going to say 140 degrees or 40 degrees Celsius. And it looks like they just heat up some kind of water or something around that. But anyway, once it's the temperature, you have a valve right here that meters a specific amount of oil and, and then you count. And once, once you get 100 milliliters of oil in this container, you stop your stopwatch, oops, 
and that is your seconds, your, your say bolt, your SUS, which is right here. All right, so that's your seconds. Fill up 100 milliliters, stop your stopwatch, and that's going to be your viscosity. And from how I understand, this is how all oils are classified by their viscosity. Really good information in this book right here, and uh, hopefully we can go into it a little bit more and and uh, go over some more things. I just don't want to do it all right now because we're we want to go over there to the machine and get the oil in. So I wanted to kind of go over that because I thought it was really cool. I just figured this out. You know, I just learned it. Thankfully, McMaster Car fixed me up with exactly what I needed. I, if you you might remember me telling you that. I was trying to go through another manufacturer to get some oil, and that was just a nightmare. So I canceled that order. I found what I needed in McMaster Car, bought it, had it the very next day. I love that company. It's such it's such a great company to buy from. You get email notifications. It's hassle free buying. Okay, so I got this from McMaster Car, and there is our SUS that we just talked about. So this was within the range that the manual says, you know, 495 to 550. So we can be anywhere from 450 to 600. So this would be the ISO 100 viscosity grade of oil. And it just says multi-purpose machine oil. And right here it says fortified with rust, uh, I'm sorry, rust and oxidation RNO inhibitors. Whenever I was given the specs from the other manufacturer on the oil, I remember that it was, it said R&O 150. So they were actually selling me the 150 weight viscosity oil, but I think this is the same exact stuff that I was going to get from the other place. So this is what we are putting in the g and &E Shaper right here. And you can get it right over at McMaster Car. And they have all of the other viscosity grades that you need as well not just that when they have it all there's you a good look down in the sump and it's been uh, i haven't done anything since the last time you've seen in there I, I put those pig mats in there and we've still got some of the uh, residual oil that's been dripping down but i'm getting ready to just wipe that up and we're just going to fill it up i am going to bring my shop back over here and uh you know, put it in here and just make sure there's nothing that I've missed, any, uh, you know, chips or dust or anything like that. I wanted to uh, talk about this. So this is the oil filter right here. Now, this is a self-cleaning oil filter or an oil screen. And what it does is this guy moves around this, and there's a wiper on it. it looks like a brass wiper or copper, and it just wipes that screen off as this thing is running okay so i'm gonna finish getting this cleaned up we're gonna top it off with some oil so i ended up buying 12 gallons of this oil and i don't know where i read that but i read somewhere that this machine held 11 gallons of oil so that's what i had in my mind when i bought it now after reading the book that i got it says that the 32 inch industrial holds eight gallons of oil so i really only needed to buy two pails of it or or eight gallons so i've got extra i, I bought an extra gallon so that uh, i was going to make up an oiler a pump oiler for all the ball oilers all over the machine so let's get started get it in there here we go Exciting times, right? You've been waiting. You've been waiting for this moment just like I have. I love the name on this, you know, this stuff. It says multi-purpose machine oil. I love it. We're working on a machine, so it fits right in. Alright, I'm gonna keep filling it up and uh <laughs> I'll bring it back. That was uh five gallons right there, so need about three more and then so what this is over here you may be able to see the oils coming up in there this should be the oil level right there I'm just 
just going to monitor that. And when it gets up close to those threads, we should have enough oil in there. And once we get the thing fired up and it starts running, uh, that'll drop down a little bit and we'll top it off. Getting really close to where the cap is going to be right there. I cleaned out one of my uh, good goldenrod oilers and I've got it filled up with this new uh, 100 weight oil that we're going to use for the machine here. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and just squirt a little bit on these gears here. Just like so, I'm just giving you a little bit of an example here, but I'm going to have to move the camera so I can kind of reach in there and and uh, cover it a little bit better. So what my plan was is to get this thing fired up and watch for the oil to fill these reservoirs up right here. And that is what the book says, the G&E book says to turn this thing on. And this is anytime you operate it actually. You turn it on and it said to let the motor run for at least three minutes. And what that's doing is that's pumping all the oil up here because as soon as that, whenever that motor turns on, it's running the pump and it's pumping oil. So that'll give the machine enough time, the pump, to uh, pump the oil up to these sites up here. And you can visually see that the pump is working, that it's getting oil. So I had a lot of guys suggest that I, that I should prime these things, that I should go ahead and fill them with oil. But I don't want to do that because the machine is not bone dry. You know, I didn't take this apart and wipe it all down. So there's still oil in here from the last time it run. I want to turn the motor on watch all these sites fill up with oil and then go from there the one on the cross rail and all these up here all right so let's get her fired off we're not going to engage the ram yet we're just going to turn it on and i'm going to go over there i'm going to make sure that it's running pumping this one's filled up with oil this one's filled up with oil and it's showering it I've got to add some. All right, it's already pulled it down and it's trying to suck air again. So let me top it off with some oil. You can see it's trying to squirt bubbles in there. Getting oil here too. I know it's hard to see with this camera, but I can look in here and see that's got oil. This one's getting oil. So this one's a little bit slower than the other ones, but it's getting oil. Our cross rail is also getting oil. This is a lot slower, but I think it's because of the, the size of the tube. It's a it's a very small tube, so I don't know if this is normal or if it's uh, it should be addressed. I'm not sure yet, but we'll, we'll work on that later. And you see this one's getting plenty of oil over here, and so is that one. I see lots of oil running down over there and also behind the gear there's oil running down over there as well. This stream of oil right here is from the one of the top sites right up here. Okay, it's pumping it up and whatever's left is dropping it back down in there. So I don't know if the camera can see it from this angle. We're looking down inside the cross rail. There is a copper tube that stops just above the, uh, the nut where the leech screw is going through. And I can see it constantly dripping oil at a very slow rate. About every two to three seconds, I see a drop coming out of that tube down onto the nut there. That's telling me that that's working good. That oil is coming down this ramp here 
and it's oiling this part of the way right here. All right, I've been letting it run for probably a good 10 minutes now, and I'm ready to go ahead and engage the clutch and let it start operating the ram. And then once I do, I need to go over there and check the, the transmission and make sure it's not splashing oil out everywhere too. So I want to turn it on and see what it's looking like on the ramways. Go ahead and adjust the stroke on out some. We had it at 24 the first time we ran it. This side here is getting a lot of oil. It's coming down over the way wiper right here. So I can tell that this corner is getting like more oil than any of them. So I need to adjust the packing on this or the, or the felt. I'm probably gonna need to pack this some more and kind of slow the oil rate down a little bit for this side. I repacked this oil site right here. I added more felt to it. And I think I know why they had these oil lines pinched off now because I opened this back up to where it had full flow. And I think this is why. You can see that it's still, it's, it's applying a lot of oil this side, which is okay for the ram, but it's gonna make a mess. It's, I've got some pig mat down here. And you can see it's catching it. So I'm gonna have to probably pinch this tube off a little bit more like somebody had it before so it's not over oiling this side so I'll continue to play with this so this site right here I loosened it up so that I was getting a little bit more oil on this side it's finally starting to come in a lot better here you can see it's trying to drip down the front knee here there's your first look inside the belly of the beast guys you can see how it's running So this part in the middle, that's called your crank. The part that's going back and forth. And the bull gear has a block that's sliding up and down this. So as that bull gear is going around, so there's your outstroke and it comes back down. That's why your return stroke is so much faster. It's because of the, the, the amount of arc in this circle. It throws it back that way faster because it's down here closer to the fulcrum end.
I'm gonna have to put some pig mat around this thing, man. <laughs> Oil's dripping. The rapid up and down on this is a very slow. But I'm gonna go ahead and raise it up. That's that's how fast it is right there. And I do have everything unlocked. This is unlocked. You have locks on the back over here, and then you have the table support on the front. Everything's loose. All right, fellas. Well, I think we had a successful oil change on this thing, and I've got to tweak the oil sights on the other side a little bit more. I went in there earlier and pinched off that little copper tube, you know, like half of it. And evidently there's still way too much oil coming out that side. So that's why that thing was pinched off. So I'm going to have to close up a little bit more and try to help regulate the oil on that side over there because it's just getting too much. It's coming out and rolling down the machine there. So uh, this side is actually oiling. I think it's doing really good on this side. It's not, it's not real heavy, but I can see a sheen of oil. And I can even see a little bit coming out here and, and on the, the back side over there. So hopefully you enjoyed that. I gave you your first peek at the crank operating on the inside. And it's, um, it's getting late. It's, uh, it's 8.30 and I'm ready to call it a day. But tomorrow is uh, Saturday and I plan on coming out here. And hopefully, if all goes well, we're going to make our first chips on the G&E. So I hope you come back for more, and if so, we'll see you then.